Hello, Internet. Welcome back to my Sky Island playthrough of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. In fact, I see we just got another warp pulse. We have four pulses left till we need to extract. In the last episode, we talked about a little bit of logistics related to the game's mechanics of things people pointed out to me in the comments. They're pretty important things to know. We're definitely going to use some of that moving forward. We also visited the Refugee Center to say hello to Dino Dave. While we were there, we traded a bit with the merchant, probably hemmed and hauled a little bit too much about what we were buying. I did end up buying a 9mm pistol, which in hindsight probably should have saved that money for <laughs> tools and things that we probably will want more in the future. Probably going to find a gun, might be a little hard to find an arc welder. And then we began meandering through the countryside trying to make it towards our extract point where we've discovered a zombie horde, a pool, the edge of a town, and a campground. And in this episode we're, you know, we're going to be dealing with that. We're probably going to fight some zombies here in a second. So everyone, welcome back to the episode. Hopefully you're enjoying the series thus far. So as I said in the last episode, we have a pool to our north, which probably means a fair bit of monster density, and to our southwest here, we have a campground we kind of want to explore for at least this smoked meat and probably steal a brazier. There are a few zombies there, but we can prepare for this encounter, uh, so let's back up our vehicle. We did see a swimmer zombie there temporarily. Again, the pool to our north probably going to be an issue. These zombies are going to follow our vehicle, but that is okay. Very rarely in Cataclysm do you get a chance to truly prepare for any given engagement. So what we're going to do, we're going to stop the vehicle here. We're going to pop out. And what we're going to do, uh, just in preparation, uh, yes, we see the zombie 50 tiles away. We're going to drop our backpack before we get out. We're going to leave this in the vehicle. That way, if we find something, like previously when we dropped our backpack, we encountered some uh, wasp creatures, which are very dangerous, and we don't really want to mess with them. So if something like that happens again, we will have our backpack already in the vehicle. We don't have to worry about picking it up from the land. We can just rush back to the vehicle and make our escape. So we're going to drop our backpack here. That shouldn't take very long. The zombies are not going to progress that much closer to us. And now we're going to check our torso encumbrance, only six, which is fantastic. That's, you know, very low uh, for dealing with uh, combat, so we don't have to worry about that. We are wielding our barbed wire bat, which we purchased from the shopkeep. Probably should have mentioned that at the top of the episode. Everything else here is in our pockets, uh, which mostly are going to be in our pants, so we're not going to have to worry about our jacket being too heavy and encumbering. Currently only two encumbrance, which is, yeah, again, very low, so not a concern there. Anything else, we're going to pop out the driver's side, that way if we have to retreat, we can hop right in the driver's vehicle right away. And then we're going to head into the forest, uh, and we're going to use this terrain to basically break up the enemies following us, because we do have two that are getting our attention currently. One of them is a fat zombie. Hate that name, by the way. I wish, wish we would change that. I hate just defining an entire character by their weight. Seems a little bit uh, rude. I don't like that. Plus, look how rotund and kind of like mocking this sprite is. it? Anyway, it's a pet peeve of mine. They've both seen us, but the heavy zombie is slower than the other, so it will naturally fall behind the zombie in front of us, and we're going to use this terrain to slow them down. We talked about this in a previous episode. We're looking for bushes that have 400 move speed. Basically, it slows down the enemies so much. So I see two candidates here. Uh, I see two candidates over here, although this one has... Oh, it does have a 400 move cost. Are either of them dangerous terrain? Like, do they have sharp bushes or anything? A fat bush of beautiful red roses. If only you could get a date, watch out for its thorns. Well, I don't need you to shame me for being single, but, you know, that's fine. Um, so I think we'll use that one and then we'll pivot north and it looks like this is the same bush. So basically these bushes with thorns have a chance of dealing damage to the enemy when they step onto them. So we might as well use that to our advantage as well. And then really it's just a trick of getting them to step on this tile. So we're going to let them come closer. I do see to the north we have another enemy, probably too far away to spot us. And it's a feral, unfortunately. Uh, it's a pipe-wielding feral. Pipes do deal, like, decent damage, uh, unfortunately. And ferals are very fast, which can be a, a bit of an issue. They move, uh, not very fast, but they're roughly the same speed as the player. So, can be an issue, but again, we would just use our the bushes to our advantage. Or, more likely, we will just plow through that area with our, our vehicle anyway. So, see if we can get you coaxed onto this bush here. You're gonna come say hello. Do not attack the bush. There you go. And because of the plus three to hit that we have from our baseball bat, we're going to be hitting very reliably with this weapon. Uh, it's the early game. We have no skills or proficiencies. So having that uh, extra plus three to hit is super beneficial. It does also use bash weapons, which we have been raising using our pipe mace previously, although we only up until now have fought uh, a few enemies. How do I see score these days? 
scores, no kills is what we're looking for. Yeah, so previously we killed two zombie miners, uh, being uh, people who mine the ground, not zombie children. Uh, wrong kind of miner. Uh, oh yeah, and we have uh, stats through kills on. I have no idea how many we have to actually fight to get a skill point. Uh, I never use this mod. I don't. I shouldn't even have left it on, to be honest. But anyway, that's one down that we don't have to worry about. We're going to bring the rotund gentleman and or lady and or non-binary friend up here, and we're going to get them stuck in the bush as well. They're already very slow, and with combined, you know, the fact that they're a 400 movement penalty, you know, we could just melee them. I do think we'll back off. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet you get a move that turn. Uh, Ferals also do have a... Oh, and he died from bleeding. Okay, that's fine. Ferals do also have a very a pretty large vision radius. Again, they're basically people, so of course they, they can see very far, as opposed to some of the zombies that have very low vision radius. So we've dispatched these two... Uh, enemies here. Let's see what they have. They have a camera. I know you can take pictures and stuff and selfies and whatever in this game, but that just does not appeal to me at all. So we're not going to do that. Over here looks like it was a lady wearing tights and a bikini bottom and a sundress and a wool scarf and a bra. So yeah, you know, pretty classic uh, outfit there. You go out in your wool scarf with your bikini bottoms on, you know, makes perfect sense. We're going to pull our vehicle up a little bit further. I think that way if we do need to retreat, uh, it, it, you know, it's closer. We don't have to sprint quite as far. Please start when I try to start you. We're going to inch up here. We didn't see any other zombies at the campground, but it stands to reason that there could be some more there. I'm just going to be a little cautious as we move up here. You hear Vroom. Yes, okay. That That's not actually the vehicle. That's just my character making car noises because it entertains them. I'm going to hop in the campground here, see what we can see. I saw a pop-up for an enemy name. Oh, it looks like it's a grasshopper. Are you like human or are you like a freakishly mutated uh, one that's generally always referred to as dog sized? Large grasshopper, a few times bigger than a regular one. Okay, so not quite a fallout level grasshopper, but you know, something to be uh, aware of. I don't know if they become hostile or what their deal is, but. Okay, looks like the bathroom's probably nothing in here. Uh, I don't think you would find a first aid kit in a campground bathroom or anything. Looks like that was the only zombie density here as well. Did I pick up my backpack? I did not. So we can't loot anything anyway. Real dumb of me not to pick up my backpack. And in fact, let's dump some of this loot in the trunk. I, I should have been doing this from Jump Street and I just never did. And I've just been carrying everything on me thinking, oh, well, when we extract, you know, everything's ready to go, but it's just not the smart way to do this. So let's drop everything here. The pot, two items would spill if store here. Um, So basically this is just saying, hey, it doesn't have a lid. So if it has a liquid in it, it would spill. We can remove the contents. It's not a big deal. Not sure why there was anything in that pot to begin with. Looks like we dropped, we might have dropped some bags incorrectly by mistake. In fact, we should have been flagging some of this stuff as favorites. That way we would always have them on our person, but we can do that in the future. Not a big deal. Let's head back here. Let's see if we can find any loot. We do want the smoked meat uh, that we saw earlier. Uh, just again, huge amount of calories in meat, always good. And because it's smoked, it'll last for several weeks, so we don't have to worry about it. Going bad like some of our other food pickups, like the cracklins we picked up previously. I guess we'll take an onion, although I probably am not going to cook anything. This is a bigger place than I thought. I thought this only had like two tents, but it looks like there's quite a few tents. Cargo pants used to be a meta back in the day because they had a lot of pockets, but because of the changes with volume and storage and stuff, they're just not as good as they used to be. A bow sling. Uh, so is it just a sling you would put on a bow? Activate to holster. Yeah, so never going to use that. Not a problem. Old chunk of meat. So this is an uncooked chunk of meat. We're probably not going to cook it. Not worth taking. What is this? Plastic bag of eight hidden items. Full of cheese. Oh yeah, for once I'm not a lactose intolerant character. I have no idea. I've been playing a lactose intolerant character for like six years, so I have no idea like the shelf life of cheese or dairy products or how, how filling they are. Uh, looks like perishable four weeks. Yeah, I mean, cheese does last for a minute. We'll take it even though some of the cheese is old. Medium tin can, absolutely any canned food we will take, of course. Tends to be high caloric content food as well, as long as it's not like a like canned tomatoes or something. A duster, I assume, is made of canvas, uh, which we probably... People are always saying they want canvas for some reason. I see them ask in Discord a lot, but I don't actually know what you use canvas for. So to me, it's not like a high priority thing. I guess we'll take it, but it's like a good candidate for being left behind later. We have a proper knife, a steak knife. I don't think you can use those for knife spears. 
If we look for knife spear, can you use a steak knife? You cannot. It's more like chef knives or combat knives, things like that. We don't want that. Empty tent. Uh, where's the door to this? Where's the door? Does this tent not have... It does have a door. I'm just stupid. It's another grasshopper. Hello, grasshopper. It's much faster than me. It's fleeing. So they're not hostile. They're not a problem. A pistol crossbow. Really? It's weak due to its small size and draw, so it's suited for hunting small game. That's interesting. I don't think we would be able to craft bolts, but why wouldn't you take this? I mean... It's an interesting item, if nothing else. Makes me think of Deus Ex, uh, the little wrist-mounted crossbow from the original game. I'm sure that appears in the sequels. I haven't played... Oh, man, I haven't played Invisible War in, like, 15 years, probably. Everybody hated that game. I really... I rather enjoyed it. I know it was very different from the first one, but... They tried to continue the story, and I think it was mostly a cash grab, probably, because it was like the original was like a huge success uh, that formed my childhood. Like, that's the game everyone always talks about, uh, Half-Life. Everyone I know is like, oh, I love Half-Life, I grew up on Half-Life, blah, blah, blah. I never did. I never liked Half-Life growing up. I was a Deus Ex kid, and I would talk to my friends, and they'd be like, oh, what's that game? Never heard of that. And you would always try to convince your friends to play. It's a great game. I was playing it earlier this year, in fact. Um, playing Deus Ex Revision, which is like a, a big mod pack that shuffles locations and stuff. And it's uh, on Steam and it has its own achievements. So I was getting, I was really excited at the prospect of getting achievements for a game that I've played like a million hours of when I was a kid. Let's head up here. We're going to take a look at this pool. We've already seen two feral zombies. We also saw that this house to the right is boarded up and historically boarded up locations in Cataclysm tend to have quite a lot of monster density. Just, I I don't really know why, but that's a thing that has always been uh, kind of an issue. They were either the boarded up variants that had lots of monster density or they were the uh, like prepper house. And I'm pretty sure the prepper house has been removed from the game. It was the one that spawned with uh, landmines all over it. And it was just a terrible location that <laughs> never made sense. No disrespect to whoever made it. It just, it was like a meme -y thing from 10 years ago that's not really valid in the modern version of Cataclysm. And we do see the zombie horde here. So we're going to just creep up very slowly. Are we going for, let's go four miles an hour. That way we can stop instantly when we start to see the zombie horde here. And we do still have that uh, challenge to kill 10 enemies. I'm not sure if you use a vehicle, if it counts on the score screen or not. I'm not seeing there we see the beginnings of a zombie horde we see the ferals to our right but and we see ferals to our north and some rotund lads as well okay this is the pool there's not going to be any loot in there have we we do have enough vision radius so we can now see that to the north there are empty fields so we could just drive and plow through this horde and have space to turn around and unfortunately, it's the edge of a town. And honestly, we're so close to the extraction that it probably would be better just to hoof it over there. Obviously, we want to take our vehicle so we can have more storage as we head over there. But I, I, we don't have to do that if we can't. So I think just creep up a few more tiles and see how big the horde is. And honestly, not swimmer zombies. I was expecting these all to be from the pool here, but it looks like they're just a random horde of, of people. So we do have a zombie child. They're hard to hit in melee. Uh, top zombie has more HP and a little bit more damage, but is not like a super big deal. They are notably different from the base level zombies, but they're still pretty easy to take down. The feral is probably the largest concern here. And remember, we have several to our right as well. I don't know if we can still see them. We can. So obviously we would like to loot these houses. We have not been to a house yet in this uh, playthrough and we uh, houses contain a lot of base level loot. That's always good to have. These guys are just a little too close together. I'm not sure how to split them up. So what I think I'm going to do, which is maybe dumb, I'm going to plow my vehicle through this little horde. We're gonna go up here to these fields. I wanna see if the fields extend further up, if there's a viable path through here. Because what we would like to do is get to the extraction point and then come back and loot for the things like we talked about, the mattress and things like that. So I wanna see how far these fields extend. As we drive up, we will thin the herd a bit by killing some of them, presumably. And we'll be able to see down this street and see what kind of monster density we're dealing with. We'll be able to get a little bit of a glimpse inside the pool as we go by. There might be a horde in there or it might be almost nothing. And it should serve to break up this horde a little bit. So we'll go up, we'll turn around, we'll come back, and then we'll start to deal with the stragglers, I think, on foot using our baseball bat and using the forest for cover. That's my plan right now. 
no plan survives first implementation or contact with the enemy or whatever the quote is. The SWAT zombie is also a high value target here. Looks like this is quite a little horde. The SWAT zombie will have uh, possibly a firearm on them. Uh, at the bare minimum, they would have a holster, maybe a sidearm, things like that. Same with the zombie cop, uh, and they should have riot gear. The SWAT zombies, I think, always have SWAT armor, which is a pretty good garment, uh, last I checked. So this is a bad plan. I'm not gonna lie, it's a bad plan to do it this way. Uh, because we there is forest up here. We could get kind of mired in trying to turn around and things like that. It's pretty it's pretty dumb, but we're safer in the vehicle. If I get out on foot and try to lure them, they're just so clustered. They're moving to the west as well, so they probably see live, like not livestock, uh, they probably see animals, a wildlife, and that's why they're heading off in that direction. <sighs> Maybe should just let them go off into the woods. I really would like to deal with the SWAT zombie, but he's one of the ones the furthest to the west. I shouldn't be agonizing over this. Let's just observe. We're, we're so far away they can't see us, so let's just observe their pattern. Heading off. I don't know if they're just migratory. Like, I know there were changes to how hordes worked and stuff. Maybe they're just migratory now, and they're just, like, programmed to head in a random direction or something, and I'm not familiar. Looks like they're not even marked on the map anymore because they've been broken up. We're just going to let those guys wander off and then we're going to start pulling some of the closer, like the remnants. The issue I'm concerned about, man, we're talking too much. Uh, sorry, I think about a lot of things when I'm, when I'm playing this game. It's a very, I don't know, sometimes I'm really dumb and sometimes I try to be tactical. The issue with them moving into the forest is that it will break line of sight if they were chasing like a rabbit or something and they could end up like right here as a huge horde and then when I start pulling the other zombies and using this stuff for cover, maybe they come out of the woods to our west and are an issue. We're going to give them just, you know, a few more turns here, let them wander as far as they want to wander and then we'll start dealing with what's left. Uh, I'm going to leave the vehicle here, I think, is, is, is a fine place for it. Uh, that way we're, we're, we're right here if we have to make an escape. We've dropped almost everything. Our encumbrance is still high though because of our, I mean not high, but it's still because of the backpack in general, even though it's mostly empty. We do see an enemy to the west. So we do need to be just a little cautious as we do this. Maybe not the smartest thing, especially because what if that thing they were chasing doubles back and they come in this direction? Actually, that's the black rat. Maybe that's what they were chasing. I don't know. Let's see if we can pull a few enemies here. Looks like we've got one interested party. It's moving pretty slow. Pull them back. Um, not really good cover here. We can use the underbrush and then fall back and use this grape bush here. Just pull you in. Everything's still where it needs to be. Yeah, no problem. Let's just get you on this bush here. And yeah, this baseball bat is definitely something I'm glad we purchased. We're definitely going to, yeah, we're definitely going to make a lot of use of this bat uh, until it gets damaged. And then we're going to struggle to repair it because we don't have the materials to repair it. But for now, it's a pretty great weapon. So, uh, and we're going to stick to this side as well. We don't really want to venture onto the other side where the ferals could potentially become an issue. Just going to pull you down, hopefully get you stuck on the bush as well. Uh, I did, oh, you grabbed, oh, that's right. This is only a 300 um, move speed debuff. I was thinking it was 400. So you did grab me. So we're going to try to break the grab by standing in place. And then we're going to pivot down here. What's the move cost on this? 150. And we'll try to pull you onto this bush where it's a 400 cost. And yeah, we put you down. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking things. I get, a, I get really flooded these days when I play this game. I've been playing a little bit casually. Uh, just for you know, a few hours over the last uh, week or so, or two weeks maybe. Um, and even in my casual play, I'm very slow to make choices now. And it's just like you you just get rusty, you know. Uh, gender queer flag stockings. Okay. Um, I don't have uh, really any need for clothing that's filthy. We're squeamish, remember. We will take the handheld stuff because, again, it's a way to pass time and, and increase our mood. Step into thin smoke. Oh, no. Uh, so we'll drop these in here as well, and they're small enough that we were able to pick them up. We did finally get a cash card, which will make uh, using vending machines a lot easier in the future. Seeing the feral humans, I am seeing things occasionally in the forest, but I don't see them as huge issues. Uh, unfortunately, none of the ones that stuck around were the law enforcement enemies, so we can't actually get the riot gear and stuff. I don't think it would have been worth it to fight the horde to try and get the riot gear. It's it's good armor from what I remember. I don't know if it still is. 
but it was good armor. We do have a couple swimmers in there, definitely not the horde I was worried about. That is a sprite I've never seen before. Hello. What um what are what are you? You look like you have a gun. Crazed survivalist grasping a sharp bladed weapon. This feral prepper has an athletic physique. Sign that they trained extensively before turning feral. In addition to remembering how to use a flashlight, their survival instincts seem to kick in when critically harmed, causing them to act in self-preservation unlike most of their fellows. So I assume that means it doesn't retreat once it's wounded. Or actually, probably the opposite. It probably does retreat when wounded when others don't. So the thing about the survivalist is that, uh, number one, it looks like it's holding a gun, which startled me. But uh, number two, ferals in this game are way janky and not set up correctly, in my opinion. People have added way too many of them. And many of them are, like, not uh, lore accurate, which really bothers me. Tries to hit the crack. Really? That's bad. We wanted to fight the survivalist because it probably has good survival gear on it. And it looks like we have another of these dang body spawns. This is the third one we've seen since we started playing this this game. Uh, and that's unfortunate because it's going to run off now and try to, try to attack something. But we wanted to pull these enemies because we don't want to just rush in there to try and fight the survivalist. Um, we did pull a swimmer and the zombie child. Zombie children are hard to hit, which I have objected to for basically the entirety of the existence of this game. They're really hard to hit even though... You know, obviously it's like a 10 year old sized creature. It's not like it's, uh, it's not like it's trying to hit a flying mosquito or something where it's like a tiny, tiny creature that you would never be able to hit. So always an issue. Plus of course the morale debuff. Looks like we did get a few good hits in. And unfortunately swimmer zombies don't have, you know, they're not gonna have loot on them. So let's have a look at this box. What do we got? Toastums, of course. Toastums again, high co uh, high calorie content food. So yeah, plus the joy. We definitely want those. We would have to go back and get our bag. That black rat, man, is just hanging out. Are you hostile? Omnivorous rodent with sheer black fur, long rough tail, harbinger of pestilence, famine, and mange. It will sometimes swarm over the dead or dying. So it looks like we're still getting more swimmer zombies coming over. Sounds like my family just came home, so if you hear people coughing in the background, there's a bit of a sickness in the household. We're going to use this bush as much as we can to our advantage, and because of the bat, again, we're just <laughs> clearing these guys out, no problem. Okay, so it looks like it should be mostly clear. The other zombie we saw up there is a headless zombie, so we don't have to worry about, uh, or brainless, excuse me. We don't have to worry about that one coming over because it sees us. We're looking for the survivalist, but it's gone, which is a bummer is it possible the crack killed the survivalist that's a Kraken. didn't it say crack earlier like aren't cracks the dog ones yeah so it says crack cracks are the dog ones i thought that are like violent and actually dangerous but i don't see its corpse it's another drug drop as well which we just is like one of the lowest value actually did i see a gun no it's a k-bar knife Okay, and a suppressor. I mean, I guess a suppressor is a good thing. It's super weird that these guys have suppressors and no guns. Just doesn't make sense, but... And the survivalist is gone. All right, well, I mean, could have had some good loot on it, I guess, but let's head over here. Maybe we can still spot it. Zombie survivalist. Okay, okay, okay. To the north. It is fighting the crack, which is the dog one. We kind of want to give chase. Aren't you guys dangerous? You're fleeing. I thought you were the hostile ones. Some form of otherworldly hound, lean and hungry looking, twisted red flesh, uh, grotesquely loping along. Skull-like head near the ground as it sniffs by for prey. So, are you hostile or are you not hostile? Really, regardless, we're going to go fight that survivalist, I think. Uh, what's the town look like? So, if they keep moving north, it could be an issue. And we see now we're not going to be able to go through the forest with our vehicle. I don't know what to do about that. Maybe we can head up this way and there's clear space, but I sort of doubt it. Might have to hoof it all the way over there. All the way to extract, which would not be ideal. Uh, okay, let's see if we can get up here and, and fight this survivalist. We could run, but I'm not going to waste my stamina when we're about to get into combat. So it has a knife, which is... Oh, should we use our gun? I didn't even bring the gun. I dropped the gun. I don't, I've never fought one of these before. I'm worried about how far north they're pushing. Butcher shops tend to have those bloated zombies in them as well. It does look like this town is small though, which is like really good news because we could probably just slip through here with our vehicle. I mean, what are, what are the messages we're getting? 
Crack hits the survivalist, but is stopped by its thick hide. Why does a survivalist have thick hide? Tries to attack the Crack, but they dodge. I hope the Crack doesn't become hostile. We're seeing more zombies. Oh man. I mean, we're so close now. I just don't want to sprint. We can just avoid difficult terrain and they should get slowed down as they move through on their own. Nope, and it's moved east towards the other horde of zombies. So now they all see me. Zapper zombie is not really a problem. I don't think we can get zapped because the bat is, is wood even though it has barbed wire on it. <sighs> okay, so we're going to fall back. They might all go after the crack. Yeah, I guess they are. Excuse me, voice is going out. Barely played at all. So we do have one that's following us, so I guess we'll come up here and dispatch it. It's another zombie kid. Oh well. Best laid plans, all that stuff. Okay, so we have two misses, so we're gonna have to move this way. And we will use the underbrush. Try to coax it into this. Okay. Another miss, another miss, okay. I don't know, man. I'm disappointed. I thought we could really get to the uh, get to get to that crazy survivalist because I remember there was a PR. I remember when uh, some of these survivalist creatures were added, and I had complained because they had like no loot on them, and so people were giving them like armor or weapons, but then they weren't dropping the things that they really should be dropping. So I remember there was a PR that fixed that, so like they all now should drop like actual survival gear, which obviously for a new player is a is a big deal. You want to find that survival gear. So unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to be able to find him once they meander into the forest and we're probably going to lose sight of him. But whatever, could have been a loot pinata, we just didn't get to it. Now we did kill 10 zombies, which is a requirement for our mission as well. So we have successfully completed our mission. Kill 10 zombies this expedition successfully completed. Did we get like warp shards? We got one warp shard? Really? One? Okay. I don't know. Maybe that's a lot. I don't know. We got six for, for finding that other marked location, which arguably was less work than killing the 10 zombies was, but whatever. Uh, bike helmet, we have a hard hat at this point. Ski pants, uh, faux fur leather duster. Yep, totally normal clothes for a child. Wearing a union suit, fur duster, and ski pants, and a bike helmet. Classic. Okay. We do feel guilty, by the way, which, you know, whatever. That's, that's a whole thing. Oh, that's right. They changed the morale key. Now you have to go in this menu uh, or rebind it yourself. Still happy about drinking drinking a little whiskey earlier of course minus 80 morale for guilty about killing 80 i thought it was 50 per so that would mean we dropped by 20 from killing the first one like two minutes ago that seems wrong also what was that warp stability the heck is this Fresh from your stay at your sanctuary island, intangible miasma of terra firma currently has no effect on you. You feel fine. So presumably this is just to let you know like, hey, you have been here this long and uh, you don't currently have an effect, but you will in the future. Okay. So let's head south, uh, I guess, and see what we can see down here. Uh, we still have that Graken, not a problem. We could use uh, that to our advantage if we had to lure some zombies to it. Seeing some brainless zombies, not a concern. I think there's one more swimmer in the pool yet. But we should be able to get access to these houses here at the start. See if we can pull anything. We've got somebody coming. We don't want to head straight west because that's where everything disappeared into the forest. Looks like this is a basic zombie. We'll pull it all the way back down to where we know was safe previously. Just keeping our eye out as we do so, you know, in case something would emerge from the forest to murder us. And we'll get the zombie's attention. Same thing, right on the bush. Dead. Okay. Uh, I don't need a smartphone. Zipper bag of hidden items. Uh, caffeinated chewing gum and cocaine. And a memory card and an MP3 player. Why is this bag full of random crap? Uh, oh, it's like, a, I guess, is it like a purse? Like, oh, this person was carrying this in their... Oh, they are wearing a camisole, so this might be someone who would carry a purse. So maybe this is like a zipper bag that was in their purse or something. Uh, I guess we'll take the cocaine. I don't know. Was it literally one cocaine? Yeah, so this is like not a large amount. This is just someone carrying it on their person because they are going to have a long day, I guess. We did accidentally move too close so the Fairholz can see us. That was a huge mistake. So now we have to deal with this. Um, all of these have 300 plus movement speed, so we'll move in here. Maybe they get broken up a little bit by line of sight, probably not. They're very close together. So normally when you have multiple enemies coming, you want to try to separate them based on their movement speed. Usually you can do that just by retreating really far. Uh, that's not really an option with uh, 
two identical ferals. So unfortunately, we're going to take some... Man, we have no chest protection either. We're going to take some rocks to the chest here in a second, which is going to be a problem. Uh, that's going to hurt. We can... Uh, I mean, we could just fight them without the terrain because they have ranged attacks anyway. So I think we'll move between these two trees and when they come, they come and we'll, we'll fight them here. Just melee them, straight up melee them because trying to lure them on these spots when we're in the open, both of them are going to be pelting us with rocks and stuff. So probably just better to fight them, uh, just a stand up fight like that. So we'll pulp them. And of course, ferals don't have filthy clothes, which is nice. Uh, we'll take the mini lighter, take the MP3 player. I don't know if we can pick all of this up. Another MP3 player. They have really basic clothes. They do have pipes. You know, we're going to need pipes in the future for constructing something, but we're not really concerned about that now. And they're pretty long, so we can't really take them with us. Um, the clean clothes just aren't really appealing to me either. So, yeah, not really anything. So that was an easier fight than I expected. I can, was a little concerned, but we did find that nice little wedge of trees we could shove ourselves into. So with that, the bottom houses are now clear as well. Again, one is boarded up, so probably some monster density. But, yeah, we can start looting now. Um, which we should probably... We have three more pulses of warp sickness. Yeah, I mean, we have plenty of time to get there. We just might have to hoof it. So let's grab our backpack. Uh, we should keep the gun on us in the future for emergencies, and I should have been doing that the whole time. And we can drop the rest of this crap in the rear. And I guess we'll just loot the house like we traditionally would. Um, you know, normally I would say like, like initially I was like, I'll only pick things up if we can guarantee that we're going to take them back. I think that's dumb. We're going to bring all the loot to our vehicle. And then when we finally have to hoof it to evac, then we'll sift through everything. We'll really do the weight management and managing our bags and stuff. And, and we'll go from there. You know, I dropped the warp shards earlier as well. We should not be dropping those. We should keep those on our person at all times, um, just for fear of forgetting them somewhere. Let's search for warp shards. No warp shards there. We put them here somewhere. We're going to favorite those. That way we don't lose track of them anywhere. And I really hate to favorite all of the ammo like this. In fact, we can drop the ammo and it should auto combine in our backpack, right? Yes. So now we can favorite the ammo, favorite the warp shards, favorite the baseball bat, and favorite... No, we don't want to favorite the backpack because, we'll, well, we can. It doesn't matter. We're going to drop that manually anyway. I think for now that's going to be the end of the episode. I know, again, we didn't get much done, but I, I'm starting to think maybe that's just Cataclysm. It's a slow game. What are you going to do? So in the future here, we're going to loot a few houses, and we're going to start checking uh, for, for good loot. And then before we extract, we'll make a, a real sift through all the things we have. We'll probably struggle a bit to be able to take all the books that we want to take, because like books are, are, are something I'm thinking about a lot that we really want to take with us. And of course, we have to find that mattress and some other things. But anyway... This this town is small, so it does look like we'll be able to maybe get our vehicle all the way back to the extraction point. I did also see there was a recent PR that made it so instead of just taking stuff that's on your person when you teleport, you actually have the option of taking everything that's in the room with you, which means obviously we could take a lot more stuff. I'm not really decided on what setting I want to use. I think kind of the bags is like the more traditional Tarkov style extract, which again, I'm a big fan of Tarkov, so maybe we'll just stick with that kind of lower tier extraction. Anyway, for now, everyone, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I, of course, will be back in the near future, hopefully, with more content. So thanks for being here and I'll see you next time.